Yoga has been part of my life for about 20 years. My husband got me involved in yoga because we work out every day and it just became this calm centering thing and he, he got me to do it. So we practice weekly and I will share that I am a firm believer in the power of yoga to help repair your body and to provide a calm mind. It certainly does for me. Um, calm mind, strong body. And I know that I'm not alone. There are 34 million people in America who practice yoga regularly, but that's only 10% of the U.S. population. And my guest today is a spine surgeon at the Virginia Spine Institute, and he believes that more people should be practicing yoga. So Dr. Esan Jazini, spine surgeon at Virginia Spine Institute, he's a longtime yogi himself. I, I'm so glad that you're here today to talk about, because you, I know, also believe in the power of yoga to create this strong body and a structure that will, you know, help provide protection for your back. So thank you for being here. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah. And I, I'm curious how you got started in yoga to begin with, Dr. Zazini. What, what led you down this path? So I actually fell into it kind of accidentally. Uh, I did a lot of workout with um, workouts like CrossFit and running and cycling. And I was at Equinox and there was a yoga class and I went into it and I was like, wow, this class is actually incredibly hard. I have no idea what I'm doing. And it was a hot yoga. And so I'm like almost passing out. And I, you know, I always saw yoga as almost like a niche uh, exercise that, you know, it's good for flexibility, but I didn't realize how much importance uh, there is in terms of how much it gives you strength and core strength. Mm -hmm. And as a spine surgeon, you know, I, I always preach to my patients, you got to work on your core, you got to work on your core. And I was like, oh my God, all these poses and all this exercises that you're doing yoga is exactly what I'm preaching, but I'm not doing that myself. Right. And the other thing I, I, I noticed after doing more and more uh, classes is that I wasn't really sore afterwards. I was, you know, mentally much in much better place. I was physically stronger. I was getting a, a much better core without paying the price, you know, especially like after like something like CrossFit where I've two, after two or three days, I couldn't do anything because I had to give my body a rest, you know. So I started doing it more and more and I noticed that I can do it pretty much like five or six days a week without paying the price. And I, I started to feel much better doing surgery after surgery. You know, I have to keep going to them to my therapist to get dry needled and have other treatments and massages. And so I, I was like, wow, I finally found uh, an exercise that's good for my both my physical, and my mental health, and, and I can keep doing it. And it's been for me over the past three years, the perfect balance of strength. Uh, and I've been able to ramp up in terms of how, how intense of a workout I do. Mm -hmm. uh, there's different types of yoga classes. There's, you know, Shavasana type, uh, like Bikram uh, yoga, but then you can do more like sculpt work where you can actually do weights. Um, so Yin quick... yoga, which is more of a stretchy yoga. Did you have a hard time getting into it in the beginning? Because I think a lot of people kind of are, are intimidated by these poses. It's hard. The hot yoga piece. I mean, I'm not really a hot yoga fan just because it's, too hot. <laughs> but but I, I but I know that there are so many people who love it. So for you getting into it, was it was it was there a hump to kind of get over to become more comfortable? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I'm not the most flexible guy whatsoever. And so some of those poses were were like impossible. I just couldn't do it. But the I realized with the, with good coaches that you can modify pretty much every pose, every motion, every movement that you have to do. And so you can sort of gradually at your own pace, even though you're in a class and you're getting motivated by being in, in, a, in a collective group, you can at your own pace get to where you need to be. And so absolutely, it was very intimidating, but I, I love the hot part of it. You just got to hydrate, 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 both before, during and after. Uh, but yeah, super intimidating. I think, especially for guys, cause I think generally yeah. speaking, we're just less flexible and we can't do all the poses. Um, uh, but as you, as you start to get more and more into it, you very quickly, your body starts to adapt to the heat. You get more flexible. I mean, I couldn't even touch my toes and now I could put my palms on, on the floor. So, uh, that's amazing. So my husband says the same thing that he, you know, cause the inflexibility. And I think a lot of guys, you're right, are very intimidated by it because of the inflexibility of, of men. Um, and that's how he is now. He can finally put his fingers, his, his hands on the floor. 
so you can make the make progress. But before we get into the versatility and, and more of the, the classes that are available with yoga, um, talk about the benefits. How is this providing better structure for our body? What does it mean for the spine? What, what does it do to our body that, that helps provide improvement? Oh, this is very exciting to me because I think number one is actually the mental part. Let's talk about the mental and then we'll get into the physical a little bit. So because you're in this Zen mode where there's, especially the, the, the hot yoga, which I like the most, uh, the one I do actually has music as well, right? So you're in this very calm, the lights are, are, are dimmed, uh, you're working as a collective group, and you and the class is basically transitioning from a very uh, slow pace. In the beginning, you're just stretching, and then you're sort of building, building, building up. You by the by the time you get to like this is the hour class that I'm doing. You get to that 40th minute, you just have all your endorphins rushing in. You don't have, you know, you haven't done this very strenuous exercise in the sense that you're like ripping your muscles apart and have, have this bad inflammatory sort of response. And so from a mental standpoint, it's incredibly, incredibly beneficial. And I didn't really understand that. Now, with the physical part, there's two aspects. One is flexibility and the other is strength. The flex flexibility, like I tell all my patients, is so important to protect your spine, right? If your hips are moving better, your knees are moving better, then you're going to put a lot less load on your back. So mm. just as part of that class, it forces you to stretch in the, in the beginning, but also you're stretching at the end of the class. That's important what you just said. If your hips are moving better, your knees are moving better, you're going to put less stress on your spine. And that's the core piece. Absolutely. And then the other piece is your strength. But the strength that you're working on is starting from the core outwards, right? It doesn't mean that you don't work on your arms or on your legs, but if you don't have a strong core, you cannot build your other strengths, other muscle groups without injuring your back. So there's so much focus on, on the core, like things like planks or bird dogs, those type of uh, poses. Uh, then once you sort of have worked on that, then you can start to build your other muscles, whether it's your biceps or triceps or your your, your, your glutes, right. Or your, or your hamstrings and your quads. Um, and so it has a very, very safe, uh, way. It's like almost like the spine surgeon's dream in terms of giving, you know, giving an individual a way, uh, to sort of have a long, have longevity, right. Mm. Cause I see a lot of patients who are really fit in the, in the more traditional sense of the word, but they have all sorts of back and, and hip and neck problems because they didn't really work on their core. They worked on really heavy weights. They didn't work on their form and then they have injuries, right? So I think it's a, it's a really, not to say that yoga is the only exercise that's good for your core. I think things like Pilates and pure bar and other classes like solid core can also be very beneficial. But for me, yoga has been a, a tremendous way to be part of a community, work on my mental health and also my physical health. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about that a little bit more because I think, you know, a lot of people do, like you said, they get into their routine and it's weightlifting or doing just cardio or running. Where does yoga fit into that? I mean, and, and as a surgeon or as a doctor, what do you recommend people do? Is it, we, we really must have yoga as part of the, you know, variety when you're, when you're doing all that other stuff to like, that's the protection What's your, what's your advice? I think I don't want, I don't want people to take this and saying, oh my God, yoga is the only thing I should do. Nothing else. Yeah. Right. I think a, a cardiovascular type exercise, whether that's running, cycling, rowing, swimming, those are phenomenal. And I think they're super important for your cardiovascular health. I think a mix of, of those uh, type of exercises in your daily life is super, super important. Or it could just be walking, right? Speed walking has, has also been found to be very, very beneficial. Uh, weightlifting on its own is also very beneficial, right? But you just have to have the right form. So what yoga gives you, it gives you that bedrock, that sort of foundation. Think of a pyramid, right? You have to have that pyramid, the base of it to be strong before you can add these other layers. Mm -hmm. And so yoga gives you that flexibility and really focuses on your, on your core. So if you're doing that three or four days a week, it gives you really good foundation to then for you to sort of do those other type of exercises, whether that's your cardio, cardio or your weightlifting, which are also important. Mm -hmm. it's, you know, we're not saying don't do those other things, right? What, I'm, what I really emphasize with my patients is 
you can't ignore the core because if you don't have a good core, you're going to, you're going to develop injuries. Yeah. And that's the structure around the spine to keep the spine protected. Is that how you would best describe it? So we have these tremendous muscles called the multifidi muscles that surround our, our spinal column in the back. In the front, you have your abs. You know, when people think of core, they think, okay, you're just talking about your abs, but I'm actually not talking about just the abs. I'm talking about more the back muscles, the, the latissimus muscles, you know, all the way up to the, to the shoulder muscles, the, sca you know, the scapula um, stabilizing muscles like your traps that go all the way up to your neck, right? Mm -hmm. So we're focusing on that, that sort of uh, mus muscular structures that keep your, your spine erect. So you really have to get those strong. And most exercises that we do, you know, or we traditionally think of, don't really work on those areas. Mm. Uh, and yoga, for example, has, has a lot of poses that just tremendously work on that day yeah. in, day out. That's a really good point. And you know, that, I mean, that's where a baby start for, for that, for a baby to be able to move. That's where the, you know, the movement comes from the strength of the core. And, um, so that you, and we have to work on that for the rest yeah, of our lives. Yeah. If you think that yeah, you're hundred percent right. I mean, think about a baby, right? Before they get up and walk, they first have to learn how to just to sit up. Right. I mean, how to roll. Right. right? So their, their, their bodies, their muscular structure of their spine is first getting strong just to do that. Right. Then they learn how to sit. Then they learn how to crawl. Then they learn how to just stand by holding onto something before they walk. Right. So it's the exact same concept. If you try to do weightlifting with, without having a good core, your, your, your spine is going to see too much stress. Your discs are start going to, are going to start to break down. Your joints in the back are, are going to have injuries and then you're going to pay the price, you know, five, 10, 15 years later. And unfortunately we see that so often in our, in our practice. Mm -hmm. And then quickly, we were talking about the varieties of yoga. There's the yin yoga, which is more of a stretching. There's hot yoga. Is there one that you prefer over another, you know, vinyasa flow or, you know, one that you like? The one I like is something called more like a sculpt type workout so that it has kind of a component of all those things that you just talked about. It's a hot yoga. You're doing more the vinyasa stretching uh, some poses, but then you're doing uh, like a hit workout. Then you're doing some sculpt work. That means you're doing some uh, low weights, high reps to really uh, get those other muscle groups going. So for me, I, you know, I have an hour uh, of time to be able to do this. So if I'm going to pick one, I'll do that. But I still mix and match. I, I'll still do some of the other uh, classes that are more focused on stretching. You know, if I had a, a very a tough day and I just need to just relax mentally and just get my muscles stretched out, I'll do the more, you know, classes are, are, are focused on flexibility. So I don't think there's a right or wrong answer, but I think you just want to have a good mix and match and make sure that you are working on all those aspects, right? Flexibility, strength, but also you want to work on your other muscle groups, right? You don't want to just be mm -hmm. flexible and slender. You want to build your core muscles because even when you're not working out, those muscles are working and they actually help to increase your metabolic rate, increase your energy consumption. So it helps with your weight control as well. Right. So you got to, we want to look at it from a 360 degree view and not just focus on one aspect of, 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 of yeah. your body. And I should have mentioned for those who are listening today and not watching, this is, we are doing this from our yoga mats appropriately. Yeah, no, it's one of my favorite. I feel home. I feel like I'm at home. Yeah, good. But not in downward dog because I would not be able to speak. Um, I have very low blood pressure, so I have, I have to like really be careful that I'm not, um, you know, that I'm really breathing. And I, I want to end with this question about the breathing and the mindfulness that comes from this, which is where we really started. What is it that you love so much about the, the the breath work that comes out of this, and the and how that translate as uh, translates into such goodness for our body? I didn't really understand this at all until I started doing more and more of this. The breathing techniques that they teach you in yoga, I think it's all about being mindful and being able to become in tune with your body, with with in tune with your heart rate, with in tune with your breath, learning how to control that biofeedback, right, between the conscious and the non-conscious aspect of our body. And by doing that, you can really just let go. I mean, let go of 
everything, all the distractions, like especially in, in our world with the social media and all these distractions that, you know, the electronics that and technology that's in our everyday lives, it's so important to just read it out, just get in tune with your body, be mindful of where you are, and just let go of those emotions so that you can, you can give your, your brain sort of like a pause, right? It's like sleeping, right? If you don't sleep, we know that there's tremendous negative effects on your, on your body. And that, you know, one hour where, I, where I'm doing yoga, I can be a lot more mindful. I can let go of the distractions. You know, everyone's phones has to be away. It's in a quiet environment. Yeah, you may have music, but there's really no speaking aloud, right? It's not like that kind of mm -hmm. environment, like a gym where people are talking and you're still distracted and people have their phone. That mindfulness is so, so important. It's, that, it's, that, it's like that pause that you're giving your, your brain from this other external stimuli which can be very harmful. Mm -hmm. uh, so the mental health is, is tremendous. And I've had, I felt that in, you know, in my own personal life. Uh, and I've recommended this to so many of my patients who now some of them end up at the same gym. So it's, it's kind of cool to be uh -huh. part of that community and um, you know, seeing everyone grow uh, together. Yeah, that's great. So it goes beyond just the back health. It's a, it's a whole body experience. It's a whole health. And um, I appreciate so much that you as a doctor, spine surgeon, you are recommending this for your patients and really preaching it and practicing it as well, because that's, you know, you're, you're modeling the behavior. We need that. Yeah. <laughs> so namaste, Dr. Dizzini. Thank, thank you, you so, so much, much for, for doing this and, uh, and, and joining me on my, my mat from your mat. Um, and I'm excited to share this with, um, with our thanks. listeners. So thanks for thank having you so me. Thanks so much. Namaste. All right. Namaste.